Good afternoon, AHN family. This is your current director, uh, Robert Marshall, coming to you from my courtyard here in Long Beach, California. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here, about 70 degrees, kind of mild. Uh, and and uh, I'm back today. I want to talk to you today from the passage that we looked at the last time, Exodus chapter 4. Last time I talked to you about what's in your hand, but today I want to talk to you about don't be afraid of what's in your hand. That's where we find Moses. In this passage, God tells Moses to throw down that rod that he has in his hand, that staff. And when he throws it down, it becomes a serpent. The text li literally says that Moses fled from its presence. Well, when Moses flees from the presence of that staff, and it, because it became a serpent, M Moses fleeing from the presence of the staff represents something that I think is important for all of us to get today. Moses isn't the only one that has on track shoes. When God tells you and me to do things, when he gives us an assignment to do, often we do the very same thing. And, and the question that we have to ask ourselves is why did Moses run? Well, it doesn't take you to be bitten by a snake over and over again to get it. All, all that needs to happen is that you are bitten by a snake one time. And, and once you've been snake bitten, uh, the natural response is to recoil. So Moses recoils, and there are a couple of reasons why, I believe, but one of the reasons he recoils is because of what happened in his past. If you remember when Moses came to help the uh, young Hebrew who was being beaten by the Egyptian, um, he looked both ways to, to make sure that nobody else was looking. And then when he jumped in to the fight, he not only beat the Hebrew, um, he beat the Egyptian down, he killed that Egyptian, and the Bible says he hit him in the sand. But the next day when he came out, he found two of his own kind. They were fighting just like that Egyptian and the Hebrew were fighting the day before. But this time he comes, he breaks up the fight, and... The, he goes to the guy that started the fight. He says, you know, why are, why are you fighting your own flesh and blood? And the, the Hebrew says to him, wait a minute. Who appointed you to be ruler and judge over us? That, that, that's Exodus chapter 2, somewhere around verse 19, verse 20. And Moses thought about that. And literally, the Bible says he became afraid. He became afraid that the matter had been made known and that now Pharaoh would find out and his fears were realized. Pharaoh found out and Pharaoh um, pursued him to put him to death. And so this fear is, is what's driving uh, Moses and the Bible says that he flees to Midian and he stays there for 40 years. Now here's the deal. This fear that Moses has, now that he, you know, he's with God, he comes to the mount in chapter 3, he meets God. God, at that point, basically sends him uh, on his assignment. But when we get to chapter 4, the throwing down of that staff and Moses fleeing from the staff represents this, a crossroads experience. Every time you are afraid, every time I am afraid to do something, we have come to a crossroads. What crossroads is that? Well, the crossroad we come to is the crossroads of destiny. God put destiny in your hands. He put destiny in your hands. Now, we're not to understand destiny like the world understands destiny because the world understands destiny as something that happens to you and therefore something you have no control over. That is not the biblical uh, concept of destiny. The biblical concept of destiny is coming to a crossroads, coming to a place where God's divine uh, will, uh, his divine plan uh, meets or intersects with a very vital decision that you and I have to make. The challenge that you and I face is that we need to stop straddling the fence. The challenge, therefore, and the reason that this is the challenge, therefore, is because uh, God is not the only one that meets you at that crossroads. Every time you come to a crossroads, yes, God will be there. 
His, his divine purpose, his divine plan for you will always be on display. And, and yet, at the crossroads, you will also meet the serpent. You will also meet up with your fears. And the way that you are to win that, that challenge, there are two things that you and I can do to ensure that we win every single time when we come to this crossroads. The first thing is to commit your way unto the Lord. The Bible says, if you commit your way unto the Lord, he will bring it to pass. And he'll cause your righteousness to shine forth as, as, as the, uh, he'll cause your righteousness to shine forth and your uh, justice as the noonday. But the second thing that we're to do is to commit our work unto the Lord. Now, committing our work unto the Lord literally means that we are to commit the very thing that he, the task that he's called us to do, we're to commit that to him. Now, committing to him is not the same thing as submitting to him. When you submit something, it means that you uh, kind of give it over, you, you almost give up, okay? I surrender, okay? And, and I know it is good to surrender. But committing is better because when we commit this to, to the Lord, we are entrusting him. We are believing that that he has our best interest at heart. We're believing that he has the plan for our lives. We're believing that he is able and and that he will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. So we are to commit our way unto the Lord. That is our path. And then we are to commit our work unto the Lord. And by committing our way and our work unto the Lord, we are guaranteed the success because it is God's plan. It is God at work in us, causing us both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now, Moses is going to come to that place where he ultimately does that. But just as Moses had to learn, you and I must uh, learn as well. We must take that first step. Now, Moses' first step was to, when uh, the second thing that God told him to do was to take a hold of that serpent by the tail. And the moment he took the serpent by the tail, the, the uh, serpent became a staff again. And so that signifies Moses committing his way and committing his will question that I have for you is when you've come to this crossroads whatever that crossroads is at this time in your life when you come to that crossroads not only will you meet God but you're going to meet up with your fear you're going to meet up with the serpent who's going to be in your ear telling you that God is not with you telling you that you can't do it the question is what are you going to do my suggestion is, don't be afraid of what's in your hand. S commit your way unto the Lord and commit your will. Commit your work unto him. Commit your way and commit your work. And he will not only bring it to pass, but you will meet with success. God bless you, AHN family. And I pray that all things are well.